Okay, we're going to go over and talk a little bit about the algorithm for the final project and just try to give you a, another point of view and look at this a different way. So, what do we have? The idea is we have some matrix A that we know. We have some vector B that we know. And we want to solve this system. And uh, for whatever reasons, we can't directly solve uh, for this x. Uh, this could be because of memory issues or because of um, the structure of A may not be explicitly known. We only know how to take A times x uh, or a wide number of reasons. And, and oftentimes in applications, these systems are so huge that solving this just takes too much time and it's not really a practical thing. So the idea is uh, we're going to assume that we have some initial approximation for x. And it's probably not a very good approximation. This could just come from our intuition, um, it's just some rough idea of what's going on. Uh, we don't know. It, uh, it's, uh, it's what we have. And whatever the thing, whatever matters here is that it, it's just not good enough and we want to make it better. Um, So the idea is we want to find a way to improve this. And if we can find a way to make this a little bit better, then we can take that method and keep repeating it and doing it over and over and over again until it is good enough. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume that uh, our new approximation is going to be our old approximation plus some change. Right? And the question is, is, what is that change going to be? Okay. And we want this to be better. It's not going to be necessarily great. It just needs to be a little bit better. And if we can make it better, then we have a way to keep improving it and, and keep going over and over and over again until this is actually good enough. So what do we do? First thing we're going to do is define our residual. So remember, we want ax equals b. Right? We have some initial approximation. Unfortunately, this is not really true. It's not ax equals b. Hopefully, it's close, or we can try to make it closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my residual, just like what we did with uh, least squares, by subtracting b from both sides of this. So be careful here. That's not uh, that thing. It's some tilde. And then hopefully this residual is small, or we can try to make it smaller. right? And what we mean is, so ideally, that when I say make it smaller, I'm talking about its norm. So idea, ideally, this residual should be really close to zero. OK. OK. So. Now what do we have? We're going to have to uh, define our residual now for the update. And it's going to be the same kind of idea. Instead of x, we're going to put our improvement. And hopefully this residual uh, it will be better in the, in the sense that its norm will be closer to zero than that residual. Okay, so how do we do this? So what do we have? We're going to have some initial estimate. We have some initial residual, which we define like that. Okay. We're going to assume that the delta x that we're going to construct is going to be some linear combination, I don't know what that's going to be yet, of some vectors v0, v1, v2, all the way out to some vm. Okay. And remember, this matrix is likely going to be huge, like an n by n, and so this m is going to be probably much less 
than the number of rows in this matrix. Okay, so what do we have? We have, oops, we have that thing there. So here is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to, uh, well, before I tell you, before we go into the final algorithm, let's let's do this. Let's say what we could have ideally. It would be really nice if we just did this. We just said let's let v0 equal the residual, v1 be a times the residual, v2 be a times v1, so that's going to be a squared times the residual, v3 is going to be a times v2. So basically I'm just taking my initial residual, I multiply by a, I keep multiplying by a, and I'm going to generate a sequence of vectors. I just keep going blah 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 and going on and on and on. And people have tried this, this is what was used uh, initially for this um, approach. The problem is that these vectors here uh, start getting close to parallel. And when we go to solve the, the system of equations, it gets pretty nasty, because using this as a basis uh, is not so great. Uh, so ideally, right, so think about that we're trying to find a linear combination of this delta x. We would like to have a basis for this uh, set of vectors. Uh, and if we're going to work with a basis, ideally that basis is going to be orthonormal. So let's change this. Let's get rid of this and, and start over. So what do I have? I have my initial estimate. I have my initial residual. And so now, uh, what does orthonormal mean? Orthonormal. That means the vectors Have a length of one, and the vectors are all perpendicular to one another. Okay, so my first vector is going to basically be this r naught. So just like I had before, I would just say let v zero equals r naught. Problem is this is doesn't have length one, so I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my r zero. I'm going to divide by its length. Now this vector has length 1. Right? So if, suppose if r0 has length 5, if I take r0 and divide by 5, that new vector is going to have a length of 1. Okay. So that's better. So now I've got my v0. I'm going to get a v1, and then my v1 is going to be orthogonal to v0. So, and I want to just keep multiplying by this matrix A. So I'm going to need an intermediate vector. So I just multiply by the matrix A. All right, so now what do I have? I've got a space here that's defined by the span of V0 and U1. And I want to express it in terms of a different basis than this, where I have V0 and V1. And v0 and v1 are going to be uh, orthogonal to one another, and they're going to have length 1. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to create a new vector here. Uh, let's just call it um, u1 tilde. I'm going to use this. It's going to be a temporary placeholder. Uh, if I do my Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, what do I get? I'm going to take my u1 vector, and I'm going to subtract v0 dotted with u1 divided by uh, v0 dotted with v0 all times v0. Now I already know that v0 has length 1 because of this, right? and that's going to give me the length of v0 squared I know that's 1, so I really don't have to worry about that. That's the same thing as taking u1 minus v0 dot u1 
times v0. And now my v1 is going to be this u tilde 1. And then I'm going to divide by its length so it has length 1. So I now have v0 has length 1, v1 has length 1, and by the way I constructed this, this is the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, v0 and v1 are orthogonal to one another. So now for the third try, oops, what am I going to do? I'm going to create a u2, it's just going to be a times v1, so now what do I have? I've got a space given by the span of v0, v1, and u2. Oops. And I want to write it in terms of the span of a different set of vectors that are orthonormal. So I'm going to have v0, v1, and v2. v0 and v1 are already orthogonal to one another. So I'm going to need a intermediate u2, I'm going to take the vector u2 minus, and this is the Gram-Schmidt formula here, I'm going to take v0 dotted with u2, oops, yeah, u2, sorry, it's this vector, divided by v0 dotted with v0 times v0, and then I'm going to take minus uh, what is this? This is going to be what? v1 dotted with u2 divided by v1 dotted with v1 times v1. And again, oops. This vector has length 1, so I already know that that is 1. v1, by the way I constructed it, has length 1, so I already know that that has length 1. So I can rewrite this as the vector u2 minus v0 dotted with u2 times v0 minus the vector v1 dotted with u2 times v1. Now let's be careful here. And now I'm going to define my v2 by taking this u2 vector and dividing by its norm. Okay. And so now I have three vectors. v0, v1, and v2. They all have length 1 and they're orthogonal to one another, and that's what I'm going to use to form a basis. Okay. So now if I want to find my delta x, suppose my m equals 3 from the formula before, my delta x is going to be alpha 0 v0 plus alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2. And remember there's a way to express this as a matrix times a vector. That's the way you're going to want to do that in terms of your equation up here. So what was our equation? Oops. Oh yeah, we had um, our residual was going to be a times x tilde plus delta x minus b. We want the residual for the update to be perpendicular to v0, v1, and v2. So what's going to matter here is expressing your delta x as a matrix times a vector. And then when I want to talk about how something is orthogonal, uh, you can write that as another vector. So uh, how do we do that? So if you recall from the, um, the thing on um, least squares, what do we do? Suppose I've got some vector here I want to be orthogonal to this. What does that mean? That means 
if I take v0 dotted with r, that has to be 0. If I take v1 dotted with r, that has to be 0. If I take v2 dotted with r, that's 0. What kind of vectors are these? These I'm assuming are column vectors. So if I want to write v0 dotted with r, that's the same thing as writing it as a row vector times r as a column vector. So that's the same thing as taking v0 transpose times r and saying that's 0. This is going to be v1 transpose times r must be 0. This is v2 transpose times r is 0. So if I do this, if I form a matrix where the first column is v0, second column is v1, oops, and the third column is v2, if I take the transpose of this, then the first row will be the first column. So that's going to be v0 transpose. Second column is going to be v1 transpose. Second column is going to be v2 transpose. Uh, so now, to write this system, system of expressions as a matrix times a vector, right, that's the same thing as taking v0 transpose so you go across that vector, down this thing. So this is my R. It has to be 0. Then V1 transpose. So I go across there and down the vector. That has to be 0. That's that equation. And then finally, this third equation is going to be V2 transpose dotted with R. It has to be 0. So let's do this. If I call this matrix Q, where the first entry, first column is V0, second column is V1, second column is V2, then what do I have? I'm going to have Q transpose times R is 0. And then what's my R? R is going to be A times, oops, be careful, this is X tilde plus delta x minus b has to be the zero vector. In this case, this is going to be a three rows and one columns with all zeros in it. And I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to try to write it in terms of that. And recall, this delta x, though, is some alpha 0 v0 plus alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2, my goal is to figure out what are the alphas. If I can do that, I'm going to uh, write this in a different form so that I can find the alphas. And then this equation then becomes a formula for delta x. So you want to solve this for delta x, but you want to keep it in the sense that your unknowns are going to be a vector alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2. And the question is, is what matrix goes there? All right. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about this and give a quick example in MATLAB. But here's the thing in MATLAB. Again, if I want to take the dot product to two vectors, suppose I have 1, 3, 5. And I want to take the dot product of 7, 2, 1. So what was that? That's 1 times 7 plus 3 times 2 plus 5 times 1. I can do it like this instead. I can write 1, 3, 5 as a column vector, or sorry, as a row vector, times 7, 2, 1 as a column vector. And now when I do this matrix multiplication, I go across that row and down the column. So I have 1 times 7 plus 3 times 2, plus 5 times 1. In terms of my original matrices, 
And this expression is the exact same thing as taking 135 transpose and multiplying by 721 will give me the exact same thing as this dot product. And keep in mind in MATLAB the notation here to take a transpose is an apostrophe. So you'll see me do something like this. I'll say u equals 135 uh, transpose. That'll make this a column vector. v is 7, 2, let me put some spaces in there, 7, 2, 1 transpose. This becomes a column vector. Now if I take u transpose times v, that will give me the dot product. All right, let's explore some of the MATLAB commands that we're going to use to do this. Um, so let's see. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a matrix. Um, I'm just going to make something up. So first row will be 1, 4, 5. Second row will be minus 2, 3, 5. Third row will be 1, 1, 1. And suppose we know that B is going to be 3, 6, 7. And I want to solve AX equals B. So in MATLAB, the thing to do would be A slash B, there's X. Um, let's suppose that for whatever reason A is really big or uh, doing that is, is not so easy. Then how do I do it? How do I make an approximation? Well, first thing is we need to assume we have an initial approximation. So I'm just going to make something up here. So suppose it's 3, 3, 7. Oops. And you can see that's pretty far off from the true solution. So uh, that's not going to work so well. So now what am I going to do? Um, first thing I need to do is to find a residual. So it's going to be a times x minus b. And you can see the residual is way off there. Um, if I want to find the length of a vector in MATLAB, the command is the norm function. So the length of that vector is given by the norm of r. So my, uh, uh, so uh, what I'm going to do here is in terms of finding uh, the basis that I'm going to use to get my update delta x, right? So I can start with r, take a times r, and take a times uh, that thing, and just keep going. Um, as mentioned before, though, that's um, not very efficient. It's, uh, if we can be a little clever and, and use an orthonormal basis, things tend to come out a little nicer. So what am I going to do? So my initial vector, v0, is going to be the vector r, oops, sorry, which is my residual, but I have to divide by its length. So there's my initial v0. That's basically r divided by its length. So if I take the length of that vector, it's 1. So v0 is my initial vector there. Um, and now I'm going to need to figure out my next vector. We'll call it v1. v1 is going to be a times v0. Uh, problem is, is that v1 is not orthogonal to v0. So what do I do? Now I'm going to do my Gram-Schmidt. So I'm going to take v1 minus, and now I'm going to take, uh, what is it? I'm going to take my v1 dotted with v0, so that's going to be v1 transpose times v0, then times v0, gives me that. Uh, that doesn't have length 1, so let's normalize it. So now it has length 1. So if I take the norm of v1, it has length 1. If I take v0 and dot it with v1, it's basically 0. And uh, so now I've got two orthonormal uh, vectors. I've got v0 and v1. If I want to do a third one, I can take v2. That's going to be a times my v1. Now v2, I need to make it orthogonal to the others. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take my v2. I'm going to take minus v0 dotted with v2 uh, times v0. And I'm going to subtract, what was it, v1 dotted with v2 times v1 and again so now that's going to be orthogonal to the others I hope but it's not going to have length 1 so let's normalize it so we're going to divide by its length so now I've got three vectors v0 
V1, V2, hopefully they're orthogonal. And let's see, so what am I going to do there? I'm going to take V0 dotted with V1, and that's uh, basically 0. I take V0 dotted with V2, essentially 0. If I take V1 dotted with V2, it's essentially 0. And so now I can form a matrix from that, and if I just make the first column V0, second column V1, third column V2, notice now the columns of this vector this matrix are the vectors v0, v1, v2. If I take q1 transpose times q, I get the identity matrix, and life is good. And I can proceed now that, uh, and try to solve whatever I need. All right, thank you.